Lance, it feels like the, uh, the defensive line is one of the positions with the greatest uncertainty at this point. Just what, what are you seeing from that group right now? I see a lot of progress. So, you know, they're working hard. To, again, when you go through camp, you're, you, you know, there's days some guys aren't always completely available for all the drills, but very coachable, working hard, uh, accepting the challenge. They know we need to be better, and, and uh, you know, I, I think our, our returning players, I think when you look at interior-wise, Tommy Dunn and DJ Withers continue to get better each and every day. Um, you know, Keenan Caldwell and Caleb Taylor have been here the longest and, you know, played a lot two years ago and didn't play. We redshirted Keenan and, you know, I really think they've embraced the challenge of, uh, of you know, getting themselves in position to, to rotate more and do those things. Caleb Taylor's, uh, you know, he's over 300 pounds. Our, our first year, he was, he was playing more snaps than anybody under 270. And uh, so really, really appreciate what those guys have done. And then Gage Keys gives us a lot of athleticism. Um, really like what he's got, but Devin Phillips is the one that uh, um, has, has been the addition in so many different ways that that's really helped that defensive line take the next step. And then on the outside, Jeremy Robinson, we, we say Hayden Hatcher's gonna always be scrappy, but um, the length that we get from Austin Booker, Dylan Brooks, those type of guys of uh, um, really have, uh, I, I think are gonna help us. Um, I'm, I'm leaving some guys out. Unfortunately, uh, Ron McGee, who was playing his best football um, since he's been with us, period. Um, unfortunately, he was injured, he lost for the year. Um, so <coughs> um, that, that's a setback, but uh, um, Patrick Joyner is another one I left out. Patrick was injured most of the spring. Um, I think he's going to help us in the run game immensely, and and uh, so optimistic about that group. But um, probably won't get the full thing until we get lined up in September. Second thing for me would just be, what were your takeaways from the most recent scrimmage? Um, I'm sorry, just holistically. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, you know, on the defensive side, again, we you know we, we had about six guys that worked with the first unit that did not that, that did not really partake in that scrimmage. So. That's disappointing as, as we work to get healthier, but so um, we, you know, so again, I always say work in progress or some of those things. So, but at the same time, other guys are getting opportunities. We talked about J.B. Brown in here. Um, uh, Cornell Wheeler is a guy that's really, I, I thought he had a, a good spring. And then after about the first week of practice here, I think he's really started to show up again. Um, you see a young man with confidence and, and understanding now, so I'm excited there. And really, uh, some of our young corners have done a nice job as well. And uh, they're offensively. Um, again, you, you go through some of the soft tissue stuff where we don't have everybody all the time, but uh, very consistent what we're having up front. Um, and, and I really like uh, where we are with the playmakers and understanding what we're doing. Matt asked you this yesterday, but have you any, got any more reactions from players with the Gateway project? You know what, man, we really didn't talk much. A few guys were, you know, wow, and, and that, you know, uh, in fact, I was heading out to practice and our uh, director of football operations, Michael Painter, was showing me the a part of the website that, that was put together by our, our, our great staff. And um, if you're able to look at a slide, something that looks at the old and the new and, and all these different photos and, and I'm hoping to get a chance here today, probably with everything we have going on, been, is eliminating one of our team meetings. But we're gonna show it soon where they could really understand. And, and as you guys probably have seen in, in that is that yesterday was about the whole district and, and the and really the the area and the stadium, but there's a, there's a lot that's gonna be added to this building and renovated some more that's really gonna be impactful to their day-to-day -day life. And that's that. That's the next thing we'll dive in and start showing them a little bit more. Have anyone outside the program reached out to you reacting to? The yeah, musicians? there's. It, it's been pretty neat, you know, from um, a lot of not national people that do what you do, and, and that have kind of seen and seen the difference, and, um, and and as well as you know, coaching friends and, and whatnot have, have been said. You know, this is definitely a big step, and um, you know. Uh, 
amazed that we've been able to do that so quickly. And I, and I say we because it goes to an athletic director that's been here for a short period of time. Is there any update on Jalen and his back? Yes. Yeah, he's still going through. Uh, he, is, he, he hasn't really taken, he's not practicing at time, doing stuff with the trainers, um, progressing in a, in a positive way that uh, hopefully here by, by weekend or early next week, we, we expect him to be back. Is, is there any concern that this is still a thing that you uh, not, not at this time. No. You talked about the defensive line. Can you break down kind of the progression of that from your first season teaching the scheme to now having people that maybe fit what you want to do? There? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, we've, we've taken those steps of, um, you know, we go back to even Kyron Johnson for a guy who's the, the, we, we took a linebacker and tried to make him a, a weak side end and uh, those things. Um, you know, I, I mentioned some of the newcomers in. Uh, Dean Miller's another player that we registered last year. Uh, you know, six six. We're you know we're, we're starting to get some of the length that you need at that position. Um, but yet the, the thick bodies that Devin, Keenan, and really Tommy and DJ give us as well. So we're starting to get better that way. Um, you know, Jim Paragos and Ty Wall um, splitting the coaching duties, but have been you know, work well together and. and and what those positions have to do. So again, I, I think year two of that is um, definitely put us in the right direction. And in terms of the offensive line room, any shakeups there so far? Or just how you like the depth is progressing? Well, I, I like our depth because we need it. You know, Bryce Kipp, we missed a couple of days of, of maybe some teamwork, maybe not full two days, but Logan Brown's been out for a little bit. Uh, he, he's in a yellow jersey today for limited contact and or no contact, but can do some drills. Um, but again, that depth is starting to, um, you know, Kobe Baines is playing some different spots. We, we worked on Marge a little bit at tackle today. Uh, Michael Ford is, you know, he can, he can play any of the spots. So we continue to, uh, you know, we talked about Spencer Lowell. I think um, Calvin Clements continues to get, get better. Um, there's been some days that have been a little bit been tough sometimes, but for a true freshman, when he's going against, uh, you know, first unit guys, but uh, there's nothing better than on the job training. And uh, so I like the depth there. We're going to need them all to be healthy. Yeah, and then you mentioned some of the young cornerbacks uh, mm -hmm. flashing. Just who are some of the guys that have caught your attention? Well, I, you know, uh, Jacoby Davis, Jamil Croft are two players that, that didn't arrive on campus still really around after the 4th of July. So getting them caught up in training, culture, expectations, how we do things, all that, it, it, it's been a little bit, but man, they, they compete and they take coaching well and they're hustling and they're eager and, and they're making plays. Um, and Brian Dilworth had an interception today, you know, and Brian's guy sometimes, you, you, you know, you got Kalen Gervin and, and Quentin Lasseter that work with the second unit behind Melo and Kobe at, at corner, so then sometimes the other guys get caught in the middle. It's very competitive there and, and very, very excited about what the future is there as well for, as we continue to go. O.J. Burroughs hasn't practiced much with a hamstring, um, and, but he's getting healthier. Uh, Marvin Grant, I think, has had a good camp. You know, Kenny Logan's been as steady as always Kenny's been. Is, and uh, it's been interesting watching Kenny because, you know, missing spring, you know, when it, you start to get a taste, if it's taken away from you a little bit, and his eagerness and, and it's, you know, really going out to work is, has been good to see. Um, Jalen Dye continues. I, I think he's really increased his physicality from, from a year ago. I think he took a step in the spring. He took a bigger step now trying to, uh, trying to be that type of guy that we need. Lance, over here. <laughs> um, two weeks into coming into the season now, What's the difference between the feeling last season, knowing that you had a team that, all right, we might be able to win some games, um, we just didn't know we had to now. You know that you have a little bit of a winning culture that experience. Really. What's the biggest difference between coming into last season and this season? Well, I, I probably confidence and, and knowing how to go about it. But, you know, as we talk, got to have confidence without complacency. And and with that is, is how you go about it each and every day because, you know, uh, I, you know, I think we talk about it in our meetings. I think Andy Kolnicki, you know, hits it as good as anyone. You know, we've always talked in our program for 10 plus years. You know, the games are usually decided between three to five plays when you really break it down. It could be huge momentum changes, but or they're literally decided. 
And last year could have gone, even other games could have gone differently in those. The ones that went our way could have gone differently. So our line is still, you know, it's a it's a fine line for us yet. Yeah, and we, we have to embrace that because if you look at it, some people think we're going to be like a hit, and there's other people who think that we're going to, you know, hang at the bottom of the conference. So we've got to make sure we embrace that each and every day and our work ethic, our attention to detail and going through that. But that said, uh, a taste of winning does does change how you carry yourself and what you go about makes you hungrier to go get it. And I think our upperclassmen have done a great job with that. One more question. What do you like most about your team going into the season and what do you think needs most improvement? Um, again, I, I go to their their willingness and wanting to get better. The confidence that they that these guys that have gone through the tough times uh, and that leadership portion, they, they do understand it. Um, Again, the day-to-day -day stuff of going out and, and doing it all the time physically that you have to do. But that may not even be fair. That's, that's a coach that you're in the middle of camp and you're trying to keep it, you know, there's, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel of, of camp and school and everything else going. Um, yeah, I'd probably the other thing is, you know, we get um, spoiled or, or frustrated. It depends which way you look at it. Of, making sure everybody's available all the time because you're always adding during this time. And when when a guy or two's not available and they're missing it, it always makes you concerned about how they're gonna get caught up in where you go. But that's probably one of the things I get paid to do is worry about those, make sure we get them all back. Coach, uh, could you uh, discuss quickly on uh, your thoughts about the, the schedule? You have some strong competition and then also um, a new conference with some uh, schools that probably not quite familiar with that you had them before. I mean, this year's new additions? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, um, you know, control what you can. So, um, you know, in, in, in this instance, we don't control a whole lot who's in the conference, but uh, excited about the new members because uh, they each in their own rights have had special stories of, of late and traditions. Um, I, I, I kind of go back to my early coaching days or head coaching days even. I, playing different people's fun. I, I think you get to go different. I, I think there's sometimes we lose that a little bit about some of those experiences of what you get to see. Um, uh, again, top to bottom, we, you know, I, I arguably, but we're, we're confident that this is most competitive conference in, in Power 5 football, and I think it's going to continue to be that way. I think... Uh, you know, Missouri State, we don't really have a chance. We'll be talking about them as we continue to go. But, you know, Missouri State had a chance to beat Arkansas last year early in the, in the part of the season, probably could have won that game. And, uh, you know, and, and that's early when they were healthy and had everyone, you know. So we, we, we need to make sure that we give full respect there. Um, and, of course, uh, you know, playing a Big Ten opponent in week two. And then, as you said, without going through everyone, we get BYU early and UCF pretty early as well. Cincinnati's last game of the year, so I think uh, with a new coaching staff, you know, we'll have a more a, more of an idea, identity, and, and what they're about as that, that progresses. But um, I think we're going to sit in here from now on and talk about the balance of competitiveness and next year adding four more people that um, are going to be challenging. So it's exciting, and that's, again, the reasons why we got to continue to work hard. Thank you. Coach, when you look back, when you took the job here at Kansas, were the things like the new uniforms and transforming all the facilities, were they even something that even crossed your mind, or was it just, I gotta go win football games? Um, yeah, I think changing the identity and the view of this program was, I, I can't say it's in the first week of things, but as you kind of progress and what you want to do and how, how you're, you're going to change things and how you approach it, you know, and, and changing confidence of young men. And, you know, so we can we look at a lot of things, and some can be facilities. I mean, you know, we go through the stadium announcement, uniforms, whatever. Um, you know, those are part of important. You know, whether we like it or not, it, it's important to young men, and and if it can help help us in those things, um, and give us a chance. That, you know, none of these are going to win us games uh, until we go out and, and and do it. But it does it change the perception of how this program's looked at. And, and what we do and, you know, I'm 
for every person that probably likes uniforms and probably somebody that doesn't, but uh, we'll, we'll be okay I, I, and we're excited to get out there. And, is it possible the, the impact on the community has been even greater than you imagine? Turn around the football program has really turned around, whether that's Lower Rancho, KU community, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, that's probably been a little bit more than I would anticipate and, and uh, kind of special and, and fulfilling. And, uh, you know, I said, uh, Travis and I went out for lunch about three weeks ago for the season, and, you know, I said that somebody from the community said about how his restaurant's booked for Friday, Saturday's uh, home games. I <laughs> ran to the grocery store last night, pick up some milk, and, and somebody, I was talking to somebody I ran into, I know, but somebody uh, somebody else stopped us to interrupt and, 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 and said thank you. And, uh, you know, I, that's neat because this we we want this to be not just for K football, the university. We want it to be for the community and hopefully even our state as we go through things. So in our region, so that's neat, and uh, I'm glad that there's some there, and I'm glad that uh, the work of our young men and our coaching staff has been appreciated. Last last spring, you guys had a big emphasis on being physical, and it was a long spring. We heard from the players. Have you seen that carry over into fall camp? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, just the the natural. Uh, yeah, we've gone. I think when it's all said and done, excuse me, um, John, that we'll we'll have had more live periods than we did a year ago. Um, you know, in fall camp as well, and they've embraced that. And they, again, I think it goes to some of the things that I was asked earlier about what I like about this team. They understand, and and, and when you point out things that aren't are not where they where they need to be or what has to be there, and this is the solution of how we're going to try to get that rectified. They they don't back down from it. They don't resist it, and uh, they go to work. Coach Andrew Russell, one of the players, Richard Senior, transferred from Michigan, played here last year, but the next step for him, now that he knows what the system is about, what does a player like that mean to the program where, you know, you're gonna rotate DBs in, but when he goes into the game, uh, that means what to have that kind of a quality individual. Well, if if you ever watch Andrew Russell, he's always in a good mood. He's got a bounce in his step. He's you know he's fired up and and loves to play the game. And uh, you know his main roles are good right now. Are mainly be on special teams, but he's always considered you know wants to know what he can do better, how he can get himself on the field. He, he's passionate about uh, as I said what he's doing. You know. Um, those who don't know, Andrew and uh, Mike Nowitzki were high school teammates, high school friends, and, and we were on the cusp of offering him at Buffalo, and we did right away, and then he, he went to Michigan to play lacrosse, and he decided to walk on and, and do that, and then he, and as it went through his time, he decided that he wanted to just concentrate on football, and, uh, and, and that's, you know, when he came here, so special young man who's already has his degree, will have his master's, all those things. And uh, most of that's been paying his own way. And, uh, and and that's pretty neat. And he is well liked in this program, well respected in this program. And, and he brings a lot of leadership and enthusiasm to us. And, and when called upon, I know he'll be ready. Coach, you, a few days ago, you talked about how good the camp Jason Bean has had. Can you talk about the importance he brings to the quarterback room and just having him back this year? Yeah, you know, you know, guys, it's been really interesting to watch. You know, we, we know how the bowl game ended, okay? And uh, to watch him, you know, face it, he, he could have, he, he was planning on leaving. He could have packed up left town. He, he came right back. He wanted to come back and be part of this program, wanted to play and get better. His growth and maturity and leadership has taken leaps and bounds from January to where we're at now. His play has continued to get better. He's a better, you know, we all know he's fast. His accuracy in throwing, his understanding of the offense, his running ability and, and not just trying to outrun people has even gotten better. And uh, again, that's why I say just watching everything that he's done and um, and the confidence that he does it with is is really to me special. I think it's a great story. It's one I'll always remember, even you know when his days are done here, because the growth of Jason being not just as a quarterback as a young man and is is really been fun to watch and, and really 
the reasons when we start off in coaching is for it's for those type of growths and and then to see it and see him play well but handle the situation and you know a lot of quarterbacks across the country would have decided to play but gone to another school after graduating he would have been i mean you see quarterbacks now that are on school four around the country this young man stayed here and that and and uh I admire that. Anything else for Coach? It's a great one to end it on. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of the day.